Welcome to Middle Age Can Be Your Best Age, the show designed to help make middle age your prime time of life by defying the notion that once you reach 40, 50, or even 60 years old, your crowning achievements are all behind you. Regardless of whether you're just approaching 40 or are firmly entrenched in your middle years, it's time to launch your very own personal journey toward a joyful and purpose-filled second half of life. Each week, host Roy Richards, an expert on midlife renewal and author of A Midlife Challenge, Wake Up, will discuss the challenges common to middle age and help guide you to a brighter tomorrow. Now, here's Roy. Well, a few months ago, well, first of all, welcome to Middle Age Can Be Your Best Age. A few months ago on cable TV, on one of those channels where they run rerun really old TV series, I came across an ancient show from the late 50s or early 60s, The Rebel. You may recall the show's theme song was a Johnny Cash hit. Johnny Yuma was a rebel. He roamed (laughs) through the West. Now, this was a show that took place in post-Civil War where the hero Johnny Yuma traveled from town to town still wearing his Confederate Army hat. And as I recall, Johnny continued to get into scrapes, of course, always on the side of the good guys, the scrapes brought about by his Confederate hat. And since the Civil War was long over, one may question why Johnny just didn't abandon the gray rebel cap and wear a cowboy hat like everyone else. But enough of that. My first guests on today's program are here to talk about a different kind of rebel, retirement rebels. And hard to imagine, but every day 10,000 baby boomers join the ranks of retired people. And unlike previous generations, these boomers are more likely to bring to, uh, their next chapter of life more passion, more talent, better health, and more energy than all the generations that came before them. They always have set new trends, haven't they? And the retirement rebels are folks in the latter stages of middle age, perhaps folks like you or and me, ready to challenge the conventional notions of retirement. And we all know the old conventional societal norms. Old age begins around your mid-60s when almost out of the blue you somehow become incapable of future vocational confidence and contribution. And because your employer, like most, has a mandatory retirement age, you're expected to cease all productive activity and go directly out to pasture. And despite anti-age discrimination statutes, once you've retired from your primary career, it's extremely difficult to get hired by another employee for a comparable position. I guess you can always find work as a school crossing guard, Walmart greeter, or burger flipper. But in your mid-50s, the government starts paying out Social Security benefits. So in, in effect, you become a ward of the state. The end product, once you reach 75, as millions of us have, uh, you become viewed as an unproductive member of society, especially acute because of the declining number of younger replacement workers. And furthermore, in this youthful social media-dominated culture, few, if anyone, wants to listen to what we seniors have to say either. <laughs> well, guess what? My guests today, Marilyn Bushy and Gail McDonald, are here to question the conventional assumptions so many of us hold about retirement. And I don't know about you, but the very word retirement bugs me, I guess because it contains the word tire, implying that we simply are tired, worn out, and ready to drop out. (laughs) And I love the way uh, that my guests quote uh, Richard Wagner, who says, retired just does not work for this post-career time. It's not only imprecise, it deflates. And Marilyn Bushy and Gail McDonald are co-authors of a brand-new book, Retirement Your Way, the No-Stress Roadmap for Designing Your Next Chapter. And throughout their book, they substitute the words next chapter for the word retirement, and I like that. And, hey, if you're presently in your 40s, you may not think today's program is relevant to you, but stay tuned. It's never too early to start thinking about what you want to do in future stages of your life. And here are my guest bios real briefly. Marilyn Bushy is CEO and Chief Learning Officer of Power Pack Inc. and an executive coach, facilitator, and leadership consultant. Clients include Bank of America, Humana, Frito-Lay, 
She's a serial entrepreneur. She's owner of three mm-hmm. businesses, and she's former national board member for the National Association of Women Business Owners. And Gail McDonald is president of Transition Resources, Inc., where she specializes in executive coaching, team coaching, and meeting facilitation. And she's worked with major clients like Bell Helicopter, BNSF Railway, J.P. Morgan Chase, and Honeywell. And she's also a former executive in four major corporations, including Senior VP for Rider System. And hello, Gail and Marilyn. We're highly uh, honored to have both of you with us here today. Hello, Roy. We are pleased to be here. Well, as you present in your book, Planning for Retirement, pardon me, the next chapter boils down to choices in three basic categories. And what are these three? Uh, Thanks, uh, Roy, for bringing that up. Uh, We actually have a mantra that focuses on these three categories. One is uh, let go of your story. Most of us carry stories and assumptions about what we should and shouldn't do in retirement, and that's our first category. Our second category is add your dreams, and that is about looking at the myriad of options that we have at this time of life. Which is probably a lot more than what most of us think. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) I mean, that is a very uh, key theme that we have, as well as the fact that many of these Choices are more emotional than we expect. And our final category is the importance of it's not just one next chapter. There are many next chapters. And the concept is to keep exploring, keep experimenting, and have a little fun with life at this stage. We deserve it. Yeah, yeah, like you said, you assure that uh, we probably have a lot more lifestyle choices than we may have expected But the problem, as I see it, so many of us get so wrapped up in our career, whether or not we're even thriving in it, that soon after our last day on the job, we have no idea what to do next. Is this true or false? No, it's absolutely true. And we've all experienced that, that you get so caught up in your life and and in work and it takes so many long hours that who has time to think about your next chapter? And that's one of the things that, uh, one of the reasons that we decided to write this book, that and the reaction, Roy, that we got from people when we asked them about retirement. It was very, uh, oh, gosh, what's the word, Gail? Uh, visceral. Vehement. Yeah, <laughs> yes, very they vehement. Work. They No, they don't like the word. We knew, Gail and I knew that we didn't like the word, but we didn't realize that we would get that kind of reaction from other people. It means quit to many people. It means not only just quit your job, it means quit your life. And as your theme of the program states, you aren't retiring from life. No, of course not. And you also say that all folks, whether they know it or not, have answers inside for living their best lives. Is this true also? And Why do people have so much trouble finding what they really want to do? Sometimes it's a matter of remembering what energizes you and what was really important to you at earlier stages. As you've already pointed out, we are we can get so caught up, our, our identity becomes our job, and we oh, forget yeah. that we're separate from that. In fact, many years ago, I had a retired executive say to me, you go from who's who to who's he. <laughs> well, you would you'd go to who's she. <laughs> and we go, yeah, who's she? In our book, we say who's that. So yeah, we, <laughs> we, we don't have a, a different pronoun. Um, well, in your it, it, uh, yeah. Appendix B to your uh, your book, you have uh, six categories of retirement from which to choose. And what are these six categories? Well, it's interesting that you brought that up, and thank you very much. One of the things that we did when we wrote the book was to interview over 60 people who have retired, friends, colleagues, people that we've met that were retiring or in the process. And the six categories are the traditionalists, and that's the one that we've heard of most. 
It's when you stop working and then you start doing mostly leisurely activities like playing golf or playing cards or things like that. And the second category is the altruists, and those are individuals who stop working and then start volunteering. Yeah, that's and, that's a wonderful thing if they really yeah, are fulfilled. Something they it. really believe in, their passion. Yeah. And the third one is lifelong learner, and oh, that's yeah. someone, oh, yeah. yes, yes, who stops working and then pursues another activity, maybe non-paid, involving uh, some significant practice or other learning. Yeah. And the next one is stair stepper, and this is what Gail and I are trying to do. Uh, con- you continue to work in the same career while gradually cutting back. Oh, I see. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds like an excellent. I know people who have uh, gone to part time. I have a friend who was a uh, child physician in Connecticut and cut down his hours now, doing very few hours a week, but he's still involved and in active in the medical field. And that, that works for some, I know. But, uh, it does, and that's what, what Gail and I are, we're trying to do when we started writing the book. And, of course, then we, we got so involved in writing the book that we moved into another category <laughs> called a reinventor. Oh. And you continue to work but in something new, and that's what we both did. And the last category, Roy, is, is boomeranger. And that's the person who retires and finds out that's not for them and they go back to work, maybe with the same company or, or position or with a, a new company doing the same kind of thing. So those yeah, are the that sounds categories. good if you can get back to the similar work, but I don't expect that's always that easy. Although I know right. a friend who they wanted so much back that they took him right back, even though it was a major corporation. And I know the HR departments don't like taking somebody back that has all those accrued <laughs> benefits. At many boomerangers that we talk to, Roy, uh, actually will go do something different, but possibly oh. using their same skills. For yeah. example, two boomerangers were engineers, chemical engineers yeah. or oil and gas engineers, and they both have ended up being professors oh, at major well, yeah, college that's, institutions. That's a great, uh, actually a great move, I would think, to uh, go from the hectic business world to teaching new students the, the, the tricks and the, and the uh, technical aspects of it without having all the pressure on them. I would think that would be a great thing to do. But, uh, exactly. And they're so energized by the students. Yeah, and being able to help young people craft their careers and see role models in yeah, which people are moving into retirement in new and different ways. That sounds like a wonderful way. Well, to help us navigate our road to a joyful, productive, <laughs> and bountiful retirement on our own terms, you have created a unique seven-step Choices Roadmap, C-H-O-I-C-E-S, to get us started, can you please tell us what each letter in CHOICES and the CHOICES acronym stands for? Absolutely. The, the first one, the C, is culture. And the next one is the H is hurdles. The O is option. The I is inspiration. The next C is course of action. The E is experimentation, and the S is self-fulfillment. I see. Now, let's go into a little bit what that means. What's the, first of all, culture? What, what is that talking about? Is that... Well, you referred to it uh, when you began the, our interview. You talked about how corporations expect you to retire at a certain age, and all of a sudden, no matter how how uh, bright you are, how energetic, what you have to contribute, you're put out to pasture, so to speak. Yeah, that, so, that's the culture. Huh? That, that, that's how about the, the hurdles? What, what are some of these hurdles that you face? Well, the hurdles, essentially, Roy, are the parts of that culture that we have taken on as our own beliefs. Oh yeah. They're the I, assumptions I, I'm, that I'm are too old. Expecting. I'm too old to hold a job, for instance. Or yeah, I'm too old exactly. to contribute anything. <laughs> I better go out Bingo. and <laughs> Bingo. I'm too old too and fill in the blank uh yeah. is a big huge piece of it. Because as we know, next chapter and aging go hand in hand. Yeah. So many times it's hard to separate you know, what is the hurdle? Is it more 
from retiring from a job, or is it more from getting older, or both? Yeah, if you if you think old, you get old. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, that's very true. true. All right. Exactly. And the the O uh, option follows that. What we encourage people to do is look not at limitations, but look at options, the choices that they have, because mm-hmm. there are so many. It's it's unbelievable. There's so many things that we can do, and they don't all require a lot of money. They don't all require that you are in the best of health, but they do require that you open up to them and give them a chance and get rid of those stories and see that you do have so many options available to us all. And to piggyback on that for a second, Roy, I I was sitting in a conference last week next to a man and we were talking about this book and he wrote down, choice, not chance, determines your destiny. Yeah, that's a Good thing to remember. Beautiful, really sums it up. The my I, entire destiny, I thought, was uh, dependent on me winning the Powerball lottery, but I guess it's not. <laughs> well, well, did you do you play? You know, there's so many people who don't even play, no. <laughs> and they expect to win it. <laughs> Occasionally, I do when the prize gets big enough. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I heard a, a phrase the other day. God doesn't drive a parked car. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, too. <laughs> well, now, inspiration, you say to open your heart and connect with your supporters. I don't know about you, but a lot of us are uh, pretty much have our supporter and our, our the person I'm going to operate with is my wife for, for a number of years. So uh, I don't know uh, <laughs> what you mean by supporters. Is that human supporters or? Human supporters, and we're really talking about who's on your team, uh, figuratively speaking or actually speaking. And, of course, the spouse is primary, uh, and many times retirement is is planned, uh, most of the time, jointly with the spouse. The idea is there are a lot of – yeah, can be. (laughs) But there are a lot of other people that can be helpful. For example – If someone is uh, interested in, um, like, photography, well, who knows something about photography or what classes they could take or um, who's already a good photographer that they could talk to? So it's reaching out to experts or friends or people who've gone into the next chapter ahead of you as supporters or idea generators or sounding boards. A board of directors, in effect. <laughs> a board, and, uh, exactly. And it's so important that we feel like we have some supporters. So in this chapter, we also talk about who do you not want in your life? Um, and, <laughs> and hopefully you know, that's can't... not the spouse. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully that's, not, that's a little challenging if it's not the spouse. Yeah. <laughs> And then the so that's next that. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't mean to interrupt. Sorry. No, you got it. Oh no, no we we're, were just going to go on to the next one, the next C, which is course of action. That's where so and, many of us get stuck. We have all these grand plans in our minds, and we never implement them or do anything about it. But we don't. We don't. And and we thought it was really important that people knew how to create a plan or had a mechanism to create a plan. In fact. To, in in uh, reference to what you said, we subtitle that chapter, Put the Pedal to the Metal. Yeah. Uh, because that's what it is. It's giving life to those ideas up in your head. And it can be in any form or fashion that you want. We gave a, a step-by-step plan and questions that you can think through. But also, it can be written down at what uh, we're in the Dallas area, and Herb Kelleher wrote the idea for Southwest Airlines on a, a napkin huh. and a, a bar. And so your idea might be on your, your napkin in that bar, or you, it might be talked out with that group of friends that you've come up with. But the important thing is is to start thinking about it and making some decisions. Yeah. There are all types of decisions to be made, and you're talking about – your team, we talked about your team. Well, 
when you when you're retired is that going to include or does your next chapter include uh, moving to downsize because you don't need a, a big home anymore or as as one of our interviewees said they got a larger house so they could each have their own space <laughs> and that's not not run into each other. So that's a question to be made. Or where do you want to live? Maybe there's some place you've always dreamed of living, and this is yeah. the time to do it. Wonder well, a little bit. That's interesting. Uh, I hadn't even thought of it. Uh, the residence question as as part of all this exercise. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely is. Sometimes I think people retire and then. They, they learn they don't really like each other all that well. Yes. The well, and they're constantly in contact, and they, they have to work through a whole new phase of uh, familiarity. <laughs> well, Gail told me something that I thought was hilarious that she heard. It said uh, a large percentage of being retired, uh, your time is spent saying what? from the another room to your spouse is in the other room. <laughs> and it's so true. My husband has been retired for a while. Oh. And I, I just have to laugh because we do that so much. I work from yeah, home. Yeah, we do that know. too. We, we yeah. also claim the other one's hard of hearing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Exactly. absolutely. We probably both are. I don't know. <laughs> so that, that course of action is the planning stage. And it's a a proven fact that when you write things down that they begin to happen or that they're more apt to begin to happen, our brain takes on the job of making them happen. That's well, so our true. next one is experience. Yeah, and that leads to experimentation, which is the S or the E. The E, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're about you know, the second and, grade and, spelling and that, here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not about spelling, and experimentation is about trying new things, even if you get them wrong. So, yeah, even you know. if you write them all down, <laughs> at some point you have to go out and, and test some of your theories. And That's right. Like exactly. Doing them well. Exactly, and we have, you know, one person in our book has experimented with all sort of, sort of things. She thought she wanted to read all the great classics, and she began reading, and then she realized that, she wasn't being energized by that, so she just was able to put it aside. Yeah. Uh, Marilyn thought she wanted to make kaleidoscopes <laughs> in retirement, and she went to a conference, and you decided you didn't like didn't what? like soldering. So <laughs> I decided well, I to collect them like... instead. <laughs> so in this chapter, we also explore just this whole love of learning and yeah. the fact that it's not about success or failure; it's about trying something new, continuing it if you really find enjoyment, and if you don't, letting it go. Yeah. And, and this chapter melds into the last one, which we call self-fulfillment, because it really goes into the concept of how do you stay joyful and self-fulfilled and uh, energized during this stage of life and still yeah. contribute yeah, and we still feel actually, like you yeah. matter and uh, you're affecting other people's right. lives positively and uh, and also enjoying yourself. I mean, it, it, it's a two-way street. You can't be miserable serving someone else, but you can't be self-centered and ignore everyone else. So, it, you know, bingo, you have to be bingo. contributing something to somebody, and uh, that, that's, that's a tough uh, not to crack, obviously, for a lot of people to find out what really does fulfill them, but uh, we all should know that. And, uh, of course, the spiritual connection is important, too. But uh. Totally. And many of the people we interviewed talked about that. And also, we introduced five practices. They're not the only practices, but we do introduce five practices that help to enhance self-fulfillment and move us along this journey. And the first one, to reiterate something you've already mentioned, is social connection. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, the research... that's so crucial when you, you, know, you suddenly mm-hmm. lose all those connections you had at, at your working place, and uh, you need to make sure you don't become isolated and uh, alienated from society or whatever, saying, oh, the young people don't know how to do it these days. <laughs> Totally. Little world. <laughs> and, and as one 94-year-old told us, it's easy to get sedentary. Yeah, uh, and so it's important to stay interested and interested in other people and asking questions and really just keeping that curiosity. Yeah, well, I um, like we, how you're yeah. – oh, I was going to say I like how instead of calling your uh, – 
sections, chapters in your book, you talk about conversations, and you divide them into three uh, major parts. Let go of your stories, add for your dreams, and keep exploring, as we talked about before. So that's that's great, that the way that uh, you have. And these chapters aren't just something you read right through. Don't you have some uh, questions and some exercises and stuff <laughs> that go along with them? Or? We do. We have a rest stop at the end of each chapter because this is a journey. Yeah. So we decided to use the... Uh, acronym of a, a, a rest stop that people have some questions to stop and ponder at, before they go on to the next one, to the next chapter. So yes, we definitely have things and exercises for them to do. And a couple of other things that we did, Roy, which I think you might enjoy uh, having us mention, is we decided instead of how a lot of authors start chapters with quotes, we decided to start them with the lyrics from songs oh. that were popular. Yes, that were popular during the the baby boomer yeah. uh, growing up. And the one that we used for chapter seven was, I believe that was the ABBA one, if I'm not mistaken. But we also referred to in one of our chapters, "What a Wonderful World," and oh, we yeah. think that that is just an absolutely beautiful song to bring out the feeling of joy and wonder that you can have when you go into this next chapter or the next. And it's not just one chapter. There are multiple chapters. So uh, I just wanted to to bring that up. And another thing that was really fun is uh, we used some uh, excerpts from a movie, The Bucket List. Oh. I don't know if you remember that. It was out about 10 yeah. years ago now. Yeah, I remember that. And, yeah, and in it, one of the things that was mentioned is that the ancient Egyptians had uh, two questions when you enter the pearly gate, so to speak, is have you had joy in your life and have you brought joy to others? I'm kind of paraphrasing it there. And I think that's a wonderful, and it goes back to some of the things that you said, too. Joy yeah. is so important. Yeah, that's a, well, uh, you, uh, your third retirement theme is the next chapter is more emotional than most of us expect. I always thought the next chapter is simply sitting on the riverbank fishing or rocking the <laughs> old rocking chair. Where is all the emotion? <laughs> <laughs> the emotion, to a great degree, comes from the transition into it. Oh, okay. It's the, it's, uh, the identity piece. It's the making that change. Yeah. Um, and and of course, there's some emotion about some of the inevitability of uh, of getting older and living yeah, you with can the sit fact around that and worry you're about that all day, and it'll help you get older. And that won't the darn thing. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> no, I mean you obviously you older. need to make uh, plans in case of emergencies and stuff. But to sit around and fret about getting older is kind of a worthless exercise, I think. Exactly, which is one reason we really emphasize to a great degree. Play and laughter. Yeah, you amen. We haven't talked you know, about that, but that, that's so important a part of any life, no matter how old you are, is to keep up the recreation. And you know, it may not be physical like it used to be, but uh, something that you really enjoy doing. And uh, it's not all work, or it's not all one thing or another. And you don't have to just have one phase of retirement. You can have a whole bunch of different phases. Bingo. And well, we uh, had one of our. <laughs> No, go ahead. We have we have one of our friends that we talk to, and she has a list of three things that she does every day. Oh, and she that's really important to her to have those three things because she it gives her direction for that day and for her life now that she's retired. Yeah, that's great. Well, uh, where uh, where does people go to find your book? Where's the best place to to get that? Uh, what give us the title again? Retirement Your Way, right? And this, I like exactly. the subtitle, The No Stress Roadmap for Designing <laughs> Your Next Chapter. Uh, where Where's the best place to go to find that? It, it is on Amazon in both print and digital uh, versions. And oh. so if you go on, on uh, Amazon.com, of course, and search Retirement Your Way, and maybe put in the first few words, uh, the no stress roadmap. Uh, it will come up, and it's no problem. Coaches. I found it right on Amazon. It's very easy to just, just type in. There. Perfect, perfect. We also have a website, 
and the website is retirementyourwaybook.com. Oh, okay, retirementyourwaybook.com. Um, and we can be found on Facebook with the same um, words, Retirement Your Way Book. Okay, that sounds great. And, uh, <clears throat> and despite the title, I noticed one of the reviewers on Amazon said uh, your book would be a great resource for someone of any age, say in their 40s or whatever, who are dissatisfied with their present life and would like to explore new options uh, so I guess it's not strict. It could be used by someone younger that uh, didn't necessarily want to quit working but wanted a whole different career or a whole different uh, outlook on life or maybe want to start a business or something. So I, I think that'd probably be a good resource for that as well. Exactly. Several people have said that to us. And, in fact, our background, is both of us come from the world of executive coaching so we've spent much of our careers helping other people make big transitions. And this book focuses on a certain type of transition, but there are many others we have, as you pointed out, during our lifetimes. Yeah. Well, in conclusion, in fact, as my guests Gail McDonald and Marilyn Bushy have explained, given today's new flexible work from anywhere options, you may not even choose as your next chapter to cease fully working uh, for pay, at least part-time, maybe even starting your own business. But above all else, keep in mind the author's retirement mantra, let go of your stress, add your dreams, and keep exploring, and forget the cultural crap about your old old age portal. You and I are both aware as we grow older (laughs) there may be limitations on our physical activity, but the key is to continue what we want to be doing, contributing our talents, contributing to others and adding value and having a darn good time doing it and forget that old age portal. And uh, whether you're in your 40s, 50s, or 60s, all of us can follow the author's seven-step choices roadmap, C-H-O-I-C-E-S, to retirement your way. And believe me, the effort definitely is worth it. And thank you so much, ladies, for joining us, and best of success with your book. Thank you, Roy. Wow, that was some great advice from the two retirement rebels, Marilyn Bushy and Gail McDonald. Don't let conventional wisdom or societal norms tell you uh, that you're too old, too unhealthy, undereducated, too this or too that in order to plan, implement, and move into life's next phase, and it's up to you, not anyone else. And that next stage needn't be a complete cessation of productive activity, but then again, maybe it will be. It's all up to you. But before we go, I'd like to call your attention to a, a unique retirement idea that was spelled out in a column by Glenn Ruffinock. I don't know if I have the correct pronunciation, in the March 25, 2019 Wall Street Journal. And I'd call it test driving your retirement plans. I'll wager that most of you, if you're in your late 50s or early 60s, unless you really love what you do for a living, would argue you're more than ready to retire and you don't need any practice. But do you? The truth is, retirement probably will come as a shock, not just to your system, but to your wallet and to your lifestyle, not to mention your ego and self-esteem, if you're in the unfortunate habit of equating your self-worth with your current profession. It just makes sense. If you can test your planned retirement budget and daily routines before walking away from the office or work crew, your actual retirement transition should be easier. Of course, before you begin practicing, you need to have an overall target retirement scenario in mind And that's what the first part of today's program was all about. But now let's start with your time. You soon will have 40, 50, or more hours each week free to do as you please. What do you think a typical post-retirement week will look like? What do you want it to look like? That's more to the point. Fill in a practice calendar with as many specifics as possible. Offer Rufinock gives an example Mondays and Wednesdays set aside for volunteer work. Tuesdays, 18 holes of golf when the weather is good. Work out in the health club when it's not. 
Thursdays for continuing education. I mean, those are just a few ideas. Uh, you, you come up with your own and uh, write it all down. Next, take a staycation. Schedule two or three weeks vacation time off. I'm certain you have some time accrued. But instead of travel, spend the time at home following the calendar you set up. The first goal here is determine if you really are ready to retire, if you want to retire. Are you bored after just two or three weeks of your trial run? Are you beginning to discover that the daily routines you had imagined would be uh, lots of fun or fulfilling are neither as easy nor as fulfilling as you'd previously imagined them to be? Does being in the presence of your spouse a major part of each day create tension both for yourself and for him or her? That's a common problem, I'm told, with a lot of retirees. And do you genuinely miss the daily challenges and interaction you have with your colleagues on the job? That can be a void in your life as well. The second goal, of course, is determine is to determine whether you hit upon a targeted next chapter commitment and lifestyle that really will bring you joy and contentment. And if not, you still have time to tweak your post-retirement plans before it's too late. And here's another great idea from the Rukunak column. I presume if you're only a year or two uh, or so away from actual retirement, you've given thought to finances and already have written a tentative budget down on paper. And here's an idea Try living on your retirement budget for the next four to six months. Does it work? Here's a hint. For many retirees, expenses don't actually go down that much. Everyone thinks they do, but they may not, especially if you want to maintain a fun, adventuresome, action-filled lifestyle. Former work-related expenses like daily commuting, wardrobes, and continuing education are simply replaced by new ones travel, eating out, entertainment, helping family members. You may be able to shift things around, economize, eliminate a few frills, locate potential new sources of income, and still have a joyful, uh, meaningful daily experience, but it's far better to learn what works and what doesn't work before you actually retire. Obviously, I don't know what your retirement options are now or if you're a few years away from retirement, what they will be. Some employers have a mandatory retirement age, generally 65, while others do not. But the fact remains clear, retirement has enough unknowns as it is. And the more you can experience before you cross the retirement starting line, the better off you'll be. And in my first book, A Midlife Challenge, Wake Up, I talk about planning for retirement in much the same way as you would plan for your next target position. And there's a science to it uh, that most importantly puts you in control, not someone else, that puts you in control of your own destiny. And that book is A Midlife Challenge, Wake Up by me, Roy C. Richards. You'll find it on Amazon. Uh, Barnes & Noble, and on our website, middleagerenewal.com. It's available both in a printed version and in Kindle. And as always, it's been my privilege to share the past half hour with you. Tune in again next week to explore some additional reasons why middle age can be your best age. Bye for now. You've been listening to Middle Age Can Be Your Best Age, hosted by Roy Richards, an expert on midlife renewal and author of both A Midlife Challenge, Wake Up, and Wake Up, Captain and Crew, Restart Your Engines. You can learn more about Roy and his Middle Age Renewal Training System by visiting his website, middleagerenewal.com. 